Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we're checking out what I think is a very interesting mini PC from Geekom. That's because it's packing in AMD's potent Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor with its integrated Radeon 890M graphics, which is still the company's fastest iGPU, barring the typically more expensive and more power-hungry Strix Halo family. That's alongside 2TB of NVMe storage and 32GB of DDR5 memory in an all-metal chassis that's just 08 liters in volume. It certainly sounds enticing on paper, but let's dive in and see exactly how it performs in the real world. To get right into it with pricing then, the A9 Max is currently retailing for £999 and that's on both Geekom's official website and on Amazon, though Geekom did also send us a discount code which will net you about £60 off and I'll leave that down in the description below. As mentioned, the CPU here is the Ryzen AI9 HX370, which is a 12-core, 24-thread processor based on the Zen 5 architecture, though do be aware that only four of those cores are full fat Zen 5, and the other eight cores are Zen 5C, C for compact, so they will clock slower and just be generally lower power, so think of it like the P cores and E core situation on Intel CPUs. The Radeon 890M iGPU is still very capable as integrated graphics as well. Yes, it's not Strix Halo, but so far most Strix Halo systems have been bigger and a lot more expensive, so I think this chip still makes sense for the A9 Max. We will also take a very good look at gaming performance later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. As for the overall design of the machine then, if you haven't already, I'd really recommend going back to watch Matt's review of the Geekom GT1 Mega, just because as far as I can tell, the chassis design is the same, so it's just different internals. Now that does mean it's a stylish all-metal enclosure with the Geekom logo on top, and there's venting on both sides where air is drawn in and exhausted out the back. To give you an idea of just how small this machine is as well, here I've placed it next to a 330ml can of Coke, so with a volume of just 0.8 litres, I have to say the A9 Max is impressively small. IO is also very generous with no less than four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports on the front, one of which is an always-on port, while an SD card reader is positioned on the left-hand side. Around the back though, things are absolutely stacked. We find the power input, and then there's two HDMI 2.1 ports, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and then two USB 4 Type-C ports, and both support DP alt mode, but one also supports power delivery, so you could use it for both power and display and bin off the power adapter if you want, while there's another two Type-A ports, one being 3.2 Gen 2, and the other a more ancient USB 2.0. We also get Wi-Fi 7 connectivity, and Bluetooth 5.4 built in. Safe to say then that the IO is very impressive and I do think that will be a selling point for Geekom. That said, I would have liked to see at least one front USB-C just for convenience and I do know that other mini PC manufacturers like Minisforum are also offering Oculink ports which is great if you want to connect an eGPU so that is missing here but generally by and large, I really don't think there's much to complain about in terms of connectivity. Moving on though, accessing the internals is fairly straightforward given the base is removed with four screws and then another internal plate comes out. The only thing I would say is echoing Matt's review of the GT1 Mega, the fact that the Wi-Fi antenna cables are so short and so fiddly makes reattaching them to the Wi-Fi card an absolute pain when you're putting the system back together, so please Geekom do something about this and fix it for the next generation. As for the actual hardware though, we start with the dual DDR5 SODIMM slots which are occupied by two 16GB modules. Now these are from a company called Wadposit who I'd never heard of before and it's a DDR5 5600 kit at CL46 latency. Speeds are absolutely fine and about where you'd expect, while Geekom says up to 128GB is supported by the A9 Max if you want to upgrade down the line. The SSD is more familiar being a 2TB Lexar NQ7A1 and this is a Gen 4 drive and reads hit about 6200MB a second with writes just under 5500MB a second. There is also a spare M.2 slot but only 2230 form factor though those drives are getting much more prevalent so that would be another easy upgrade. 
That is really it though for the design of the machine and now it's time to talk about testing and the first thing we're going to do here is establish the CPU behavior. Geekom states that this HX370 has been configured with a 54 watt TDP and a run of Cinebench shows it briefly hitting 65 watts but it almost immediately drops back to 54 watts where the Zen 5 cores run at about 3.9 gigahertz with the Zen 5C cores at about 3 gigahertz. However, after about another 10 minutes, power does drop further back to 45 watts, reducing clock speeds again slightly by another 200 megahertz or so. Now, that was actually all running the normal power profile, which you can select in the BIOS. And just as a side note, how ancient does this BIOS look? But we can see slightly different behavior if we select the performance mode. It still has that initial boost to 65 watts before quickly hitting 54 watts. The difference here is though that the performance mode maintains 54 watts the entire time, unlike normal mode which dropped back to 45 watts. That being said, the difference is much smaller than you might think, and over a 30 minute Cinebench test between the two modes, we only saw the performance mode scoring 3% higher, while in games testing, there was basically no difference in the frame rate. As we will hear later in the video as well, the performance mode makes an absolute racket in terms of fan noise, so I do recommend using the normal mode, and that is how I did the rest of my testing. With that in mind, the first thing to say is that general system performance is very snappy indeed. If you're just using it as an office PC, doing things like word processing, web browsing emails, it's arguably overkill. I did even try out the Puget Bench Photoshop test though, which uses absolutely huge 15K files at points, but the system still stayed very responsive. However, aside from people just wanting a general office PC, I also think the A9 Max is going to appeal to those looking to do some, shall we say, AI shenanigans on the cheap, as after all, it is packing in the Ryzen AI 986370, 370 which has a built-in 50-top XDNA2 NPU. Now, that NPU can definitely help accelerate certain workflows. We're looking here at the Procyon AI Vision Test, where running it on the NPU results in vastly higher scores than either the CPU or the GPU. However, and while I'm definitely not an AI expert, I'm not sure how many things are optimized for the NPU currently. Certainly, the LLM tests in Procyon only run on the CPU or GPU. And on that note, actually, one other thing that does come in handy here is changing how much memory is available to the iGPU in the BIOS. By default, it ships with just four gigs, but you can adjust this all the way up to 24 gigabytes. Now, I definitely don't recommend leaving it on four gig as a lot of tests simply don't run like this image generation sequence using stable diffusion and LLM performance also struggles. Whereas if we retest with 16 gigs available to the iGPU, that allowed the stable diffusion test to run, admittedly slowly, but it still worked, while LLM performance also gets a boost, up to 33% using the Llama 2.1 13B model. I also gave Geekbench AI Pro a go and found much higher single and half position scores using the Onyx runtime on the Radeon 890M, whereas using OpenVINO on the CPU has significantly higher quantized score. Of course though, we do need to talk about gaming with the Radeon 890M being a highly capable iGPU, something that surprised me when I first checked it out last year in its laptop form. It is still just an iGPU though with 16 RGNA 3.5 CUs and for that reason, we're gonna be focusing our testing on 1080p resolution using low image quality settings and where it made sense, I also retested with FSR balance mode just to see what sort of performance is available depending on the different image quality settings you want to use. Starting off then with some Counter-Strike 2, which I think is mandatory to test on any iGPU. The good news is that low settings without any upscaling is very playable. In fact, more than that, given that we're looking at well over 100 FPS, typically in the 130 to 140 FPS range. Now, I also enabled FSR balance mode and not only did it adversely affect image quality, overall performance didn't actually increase by much, if at all, suggesting another kind of system bottleneck in play, so you could likely opt for higher image quality if you wanted without affecting the overall frame rate. As for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 though, using the multiplayer benchmark, here we're testing at the minimum preset and things are still pretty good. Sure, the game doesn't look amazing, but getting at least 60 FPS, often in the 70s and 80s range, is still very good going for an iGPU in my opinion. FSR balance mode will also get you higher frame rates, sometimes touching up to 100 FPS, though typically lower than that, so it could well be a trade-off worth making depending on your priorities. Now, Cyberpunk 2070 at low settings though is a much sterner test, and this time it's just about holding above 30 FPS, and you, you can see a few squiggles in the frame time graph. It's generally okay, but definitely not super smooth. 
FSR balance mode though does increase frame rate into the high 40s or low 50s, but I have to say image quality is severely impacted here. And I remember thinking it almost looks like an 8-bit game while testing. So definitely a compromise that you will have to weigh up. F125, however, is super well optimized and using the ultra low preset, we were in the 80 to 90 FPS range in the Las Vegas benchmark, occasionally going even higher. In fact, the game works so well, I even tried out the high preset at 1080p, which sounds like madness on an iGPU, but it definitely helps out visuals and still runs at close to 60 FPS with a very smooth frame time graph. So that's a great example of what's possible on an iGPU like this with a game that isn't overly resource intensive, despite looking pretty good to my eye as well. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is another title with very smooth frame times, but the overall frame rate is again not much above 30 FPS using 1080p low settings. FSR balance does work pretty well here again though, almost doubling performance into the 60 FPS region, and while it does look a bit softer, it's definitely not as much of a trade-off to image quality as we saw in Cyberpunk. Lastly then we have Marvel Rivals, a game I find strangely hard to run despite being a competitive title. 1080p low settings for instance sees the A9 maps falling below 30 FPS in the more intense fight scenes, so you do need something like Eversar balanced upscaling to smooth things out. Even then though, the mid to high 40 FPS range is hardly super smooth, but I would say it's definitely better than playing without any upscaling. That just leaves thermals and noise levels then, and as I said earlier on in the video, I do recommend just sticking with the normal mode in the BIOS. That's because it was reasonably loud at 45 decibels, but hardly an absolute killer, whereas the performance mode takes that up several notches, with the sound meter flitting between 51 and 52 decibels, and it was pretty unbearable. Enough of me talking though, here's a quick sound test so you can hear it for yourself. The good news though is that thermals really aren't a problem for the silicon with its 54 watt TDP. The normal mode for instance saw CPU temperatures settling at around 70C during a 30 minute Cine event stress test, while that creeps up to about 74 degrees using the performance mode. I also whipped out my thermal imaging camera and the chassis itself stays very cool. You can see the cold spots where air comes in from the sides, though it does get a bit toasty around the back where air is exhausted out, but nothing really worrisome at all, so it's definitely good work from Geekom there. That brings us to the end of the video though, and overall, I have to say I've been really impressed by Geekom's A9 Max. If you've been expecting something that's going to rival your full-size desktop with, say, a 250W GPU, then this obviously isn't going to be that. But considering it's less than a litre in volume, I think the A9 Max really packs a punch and doesn't do a whole lot wrong. Performance, as we saw, is very solid, being very smooth for day-to-day -day tasks, while it can also execute some AI functions, though be sure to change the iGPU's allocated memory from the default 4GB setting, as that's pretty useless. The Radeon 890M is very capable for 1080p low settings gaming too, and the overall selection of ports and connectors is very comprehensive. Yes, there's no Oculink, and I would like to see a front USB-C, but otherwise I'd say it's hard to fault. Other minor issues include those really annoying Wi-Fi antenna cables which make reassembling of the system very fiddly if you accidentally pop them off when opening the machine up, while it also gets very loud in the performance mode, though the normal mode isn't quite so bad and that is the one I recommend using. At the end of the day then, for just under a grand or about 940 quid if you use our discount code which I'll leave in the description, I think it's safe to say that the A9 Max is a very capable mini PC. It really packs a punch despite its diminutive size and I think it's pretty versatile as well, so I do think this one will be attracting some interest in the mini PC space. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it please do toss me a thumbs up and as always let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. If you want to carry on the conversation you can find a link to our Discord server in the description as well and while there you'll also find links to both our merch store and our Patreon. And don't forget we do have a 6% discount code for the A9 Max though please be aware it is not an affiliate link so we do not benefit from any purchases. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for Kick Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.